why are we here is a good question as, as I'll just start a little preamble. Well, one of the things that myself and Jay and your leadership, uh, Vanessa and Steven uh, and, and Walt, et cetera, what we do is we go to a lot of conferences around, around the country and we're looking at trends, looking at new systems that people are using uh, specifically, you know, what MLSs are, are adopting. Um, and it's kind of fun because sometimes we're the leaders and then people, you know, check out what we're doing, but it's, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a very, uh, open symbiotic relationship. As a matter of fact, next week I'll be in Seattle at the CMLS conference, which is one of the one of the main ones. Hence the name CMLS, the Council Council of Multiple Listing Services. And so it's more options, opportunities to see what people are using, um, how that might benefit San Francisco. And um, at the Inman conference, I think it was Brian. I think we met at Inman. That sounds about right yep. in, in New yep. York. Yeah, that was Inman. Yep. Yeah. So we. Um, you know, we've been following uh, what AI is doing, of course, but but particularly what is happening in the property re report space. You know, what's what's happening with uh, additional analytics we can all do on property reports. And uh, we knew that that was an area that we could um, increase our, our options for our members. And so in talking with Brian and I think James, uh, I believe as well, the founder, uh, what's interesting is that we just, you know, developed a, a Sometimes these things take a little bit longer than you think, you know, because there's there's obviously some things that we're focusing on with the NAR settlement. That was our primary objective to get through all that. So we've gotten through that. So thank you, all of you on this call for for being part of that. Um, but it became apparent that it was time to uh, to dig into some of this new um, technology, especially um, the AI components of Real Reports. What before I pass this over to Brian, what you want to think about where Real, Real Report sits in our ecosystem is it is a uh, sort of a property, it's a it's a realist property report on steroids. If you've ever had to do a um, realist property report, you need to pay like, I think it's like the 10 or 15 bucks for the report. And you're then you're, um, then you're off to the races. Um, that is a fraction of the data sets that the real reports guys have to show you today. And I, I think um, one of the benefits we've been able to develop with them is getting you guys some snapshots every month. So you can kind of test the waters. And if you have a particular property that you're going on for a listing presentation and brand you got a ton of other ways people would use the software as well but for example yep. listing presentation and you want to pull as much data as you can so you're showing up as a very much an informed uh, real estate agent in your listing presentation then you might want to pull a real report for that so without further ado we got 24 look like 28 people in that's awesome uh, for your first look at real reports and without further ado brian what you uh Tell us about Real Reports and, and how it's going to impact uh, these agents and, and your so, uh, your uh, connection with the so San Francisco Association of Realtors. Thank you. I appreciate the intro, HUD, and thank you for all the kind words. Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, as HUD said, uh, my name is Brian Preston. I'm here from a company called Real Reports. I am going to share my screen real quick, and then Can we see it. We're good. Start this uh, slideshow here. Here we go. Uh, so again. Brian Preston from Real Reports here. We are your AI, think of us as your AI powered property advisor. It's gonna help you grow sales and mitigate risk. Um, so before I get too far into the product, I always like to talk about our team. Um, our core team is comprised of experienced brokers and MLS directors and technologists. Uh, previously, we founded uh, brokerages and run brokerages, helped thousands of clients, closed hundreds of millions in home sales, and we're backed by top tier uh, prop tech investors. And why do I tell you that? I, I tell you that because I just want everyone, I would like to start by saying like, we are not outsiders coming into the industry and trying to solve a problem that may or may not exist. Um, we are experienced agents who are building tools that we ourselves find useful when we were doing business. So I just like to put that out there just so you know, I've been licensed since 2005, um, was a full-time agent for over a decade um, and have spent the last decade or so uh, in and out of the prop tech space. So again, we build tools that are, are useful and practical and solve actual problems um, and help you guys do more business and just kind of be more efficient. Um, so our industry is changing, right? Obviously, we're in an com uh, increasingly competitive market. Uh, the number of listings that have been on the market has been steadily going down over the years, which means there's a smaller uh, slice of the pie that people are competing for. Obviously, uh, we know about the new compensation rules and regulations that are kind of kicking uh, things around and making them a little more complicated than they used to be. Uh, and, you know, every day it's just becoming harder and harder for agents to differentiate themselves and to show value, right? So our solution is real reports. And the easiest way to think about it is a, it's like an AI supercharged Carfax for homes. 
So what we've done is we have taken uh, comprehensive property data from over 40 sources, right? Now, when I say comprehensive property data, I'm, you know, I'm not talking about MLS data, right? SFAR and your team there has done a great job uh, consolidating everything you might need to know uh, in terms of the details of a property, right? But what we've done is kind of gone outside of that scope, information you may or may not be looking up for uh, your consumers uh, who are buying houses or selling houses. You know, obviously, uh, sometimes they're in 20, 30, 40 different places. So it can take, it can be very labor intensive, very time intensive. Uh, we're available for every home in the US. And what we've done is because there's so much information in the report, sometimes it can be, you know, hard to kind of go through and get all that information. And so what we've done is we have put an AI layer on top of that, that allows you rather than having to go through the entire report, you can just ask our uh, AI co-pilot Aiden, any question about the property, it will search through the report and answer that question for you. So <clears throat> we get, we talk about what other data is in there. As you can oh, wow. see, there's a, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of other data uh, yeah. that we have incorporated into this report. And we partner uh, with a lot of, obviously a lot of different, uh, data providers and our philosophy, you know, we want to be uh, very wide in terms of the amount of data that we have, but we also like to be deep with the data that we have, right? So, you know, for example, we may check five, six, seven different sources to confirm that it's a three bedroom uh, property, right? So we always, we don't want to rely on any one source where we uh, can, we want to partner with as many uh, data providers as possible so that we have some redundancies and we're checking in on ourselves as we as we build out. I mean, and I'm already seeing a benefit here, Brian, because we have you look at like these 40 some odd data sources and it can get overwhelming uh, and you want to sure. be able to explain with authority uh, right. what these data, what these data points mean. You know, it's, it can synthesize it in a way that's easily digestible. Exactly. And, yeah. and I'm excited. I'll show you guys the report uh, in a few minutes here, but we've uh, put all this information in one spot, one report um, that's easily shareable with all of your clients. So again, we talk about that there is a lot of data, but data is only valuable if you know what to do with it. So again, I talked a little bit before about our AI co-pilot, Aiden. Uh, they're there to kind of act as a co-advisor with you to help people find out more information about the property. Um, it analyzes tens of thousands of data points inside the reports. It also can summarize documents and um, you can upload photos into the report. It'll analyze the photos as well. Uh, the document summary is a great piece. Um, you can upload, you know, condo docs, HOA docs, inspection reports, and that information can then become part of the report. And Aiden can actually reference those documents when a consumer is asking questions about the property. Um, we've also baked in some lead capture here that I'll talk about in a little bit. It is fair housing trained. And we just recently uh, launched multilingual voice chat. So now you don't even have to type into the report now. You can just click the microphone and talk. If you talk to it in Spanish, it will answer it in Spanish, right? So it's a great way to make this report available to as many people as possible. And all of this is, you know, we don't think AI is going to replace agents, right? But what this allows you guys to do is focus on what you are here to do, which is really help agents, uh, really help your consumers, right? So we don't think it's going to replace it. But we do think that agents who are using AI will start out competing agents who aren't using it. This is a common theme uh, right now. Uh, you know, we had an AI symposium earlier this year with our partners at Sidekick and, and OpenAI, and it's a it's a reasonable threat assessment, I guess. You know, if you're a real estate agent or in technology of real estate, you would have sort of the same uh, sort of trepidations, but. As we know, AI is not going anywhere, and it's important for us as uh, real estate agents and technologists to understand it, understand um, how it can assist us. And the thing I really like about these guys in terms of that last bullet point, fair housing trained, is the first thing we asked, uh, Jay and, and Walt and I asked and, and leadership, okay, so it's not, you know, it's, it understands that it is not taking the place of a real estate agent. It understands that it needs to um, follow the laws um, that are already pre-described. We, we all take ethics courses, and this is an example of, of something that would be in an ethics course. So I expect that as this evolves, Brian, do you expect mm -hmm. you're going to be following more close, I mean, close aligned with, with the real estate practices and make sure it's, it's checking oh, sure. its boxes? Yeah, okay. Exactly. And again, because we come from the industry, we're always, you know, we, we keep up to date with all the latest uh, requirements, the latest standards. Uh, so again, we want this, we don't, obviously we don't want this to, 
uh, be an issue for everyone. We want this to be supportive. We want this to be helpful for all of your agents. So we always want to make sure that we are building tools that make the agents' tool. lives easier, right? right. Um, right. That's always the goal here as someone, <laughs> you know, it's always that time of year you got five deals going on at the same time and you need five hands and two brains. Well, we can <laughs> provide one of those for you <laughs> to help you guys work more efficiently. So transitioning now, how do we help agents, right? So we like to think of it four different ways, right? We can help you win more listings. We can help you provide unique value. We can help you generate leads and we can help you mitigate risk, right? So we'll kind of dive, I'll dive into each one of those individually. Now we'll kind of talk through that. So win more listings. Uh, you'll see here, this is Jimmy Moscoso. He is an agent who has been on our tool for almost a year now. Uh, last January, he started using our tool. In January, he took three listings, and one of them was a $6 million listing. He actually went on the AI Flash, Real Estate AI Flash podcast to talk about that. Uh, I think you can find them on Spotify if you look it up. But basically, what he does is he uses uh, real reports on his listing presentations, right? Because now he can bring even more information with him on those listing appointments, right? He can show sellers. He has all this information about this property. He's tech forward, right? He's using AI. He's not just you know, put the sign in the ground and, you know, see you later kind of thing, right? And because he has access to all this information, he can use this to work with sellers and make sure that, you know, they're priced properly. They've gotten everything they need to get out publicly. And that can help kind of recruit, uh, decrease days on market because they're making informed decisions there. Uh, when it comes to unique value, uh, Dean Russo over Baird and Warner was one of the first brokerages on the platform. He kind of saw the NAR settlement changes coming. Uh, so he works with us. Uh, his agents use these on buyer presentations to show their value to buyer's agents, right? Especially now with NAR and everybody getting the broker agency agreements signed. The first question that your buyer clients are probably asking is, well, what are you going to do for me, right? Well, this is a great way to show that, hey, I bring all this information. In addition to finding you properties and helping you write contracts, I can bring you access to all of this information about a property before we even go see it, right? Uh, and again, help save hours of time, right? If you went to all these sources individually and had to bring them all together, it could take hours, right? And then because you have so much information, it really is helpful when you're submitting offers, knowing that you've done everything you can to figure out where there might be a problem or not be a problem and make competitive offers right off the bat. Uh, we talk about uh, Aiden as a, as a lead gen, right? So I'll show you in the reports, but essentially you can turn on and require name and email address for anyone to view your report, right? So agents will share these links as part of their marketing materials. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the open house. There's a great way. Every property comes with a custom QR code. You can put this outside of a property. What if you put a sign outside the property that said, want to take an AI tour of this property, an AI assisted tour of the property, click here, right? That way you'll know who's uh, seeking information. They'll be able to ask questions about the property. And as the listing agent, you'll be able to see Who's, who's looking at your property, what questions they're asking, and then also what is the response that the AI is giving to those questions. So this here is an open house flyer that we have, and there's one for every property. But basically, if you're having an open house, you can put this out on the table, either next to the sign-in sheet or uh, as a replacement to the sign-in sheet. And now when consumers are taking tours of your house, they can ask questions to the AI. And again, the agent receives those questions and those answers. So it really makes it easy to follow up after open house. You say, HUD, thanks for coming to my open house this weekend. I saw that you were asking if they can build an ADU in the backyard. Well, based on the report, here's the answer to that. Or maybe they're asking about schools, or maybe they're asking about restaurants that are nearby. So you get to see what really matters to those consumers, and you get to craft your message after that open house, specifically to each person who's looked through the house. So I would consider this a companion to any sign-up sheet that your brokerage might require you to have at the open house. So just to kind yep. of underscore that, we have new rules and regulations that we just discussed a minute ago. So just keep that in mind, that if your brokerage is requiring a, a open house sign-up, this is like a companion to that to get additional yep. data. I didn't want to didn't want to contradict you there, Brian, but I got to make sure that we are following hey. our, our, our local rules. And, and, and we I have a question that I think that. we'll get to uh, in, in a minute. It's just about um, uh, access to the product. But uh, William, sit tight. We're going to answer your question in terms of how you get access. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for that. And again, uh, I talked a little bit about requiring the information. Uh, if you turn on uh, lead capture, it'll essentially ask for name, email address. Maybe they give you a phone number, maybe they don't, but now you're able to capture that information of anyone who looks at the report. 
And then once you have that information, you've got a dashboard here, you'll see that what they asked, responses to that question, when they asked it, what property. So it's a great way uh, to generate high quality leads here. And then finally, we talk about mitigating risk, right? Um, if you pay attention to the news, one of the big things in the news right now is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues with uh, missed assessments and condo documents and things like that, right? We've all seen inspection reports. We've all seen condo docs, HOA docs. Sometimes they're 20, 30, 40 pages or more, right? We know that sometimes as much as we would like, the buyers aren't really reading through those things 100%. And sometimes as agents, maybe we're too busy and we don't get a chance to read through them as well. So now with our tool, you can upload documents into the system. We will summarize it. We'll help pull out any red flags. And that way you can help find those mistakes before they happen. So why don't I hop right in, uh, do a product demo. And I'm, uh, once we're done with that, a couple more slides, and then I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, so you guys can still see my screen or no? Yep. Yeah, we got it. Okay, perfect here. So here you are. You'll see this is real reports. You can type in any address you want to get a report for any address. I pulled this property this morning uh, just as an example, and I'll take you guys through uh, the report here. So first things first, I'd like to talk about branding. Uh, I'm on uh, my version of this, but in your version of this, uh, it will have the SF SFAR logo as part of this up here. And then at the top, you'll see agent branding here. Uh, where it says real reports, you'll be able to upload a brokerage logo to that as well. Um, you can upload your social media links. If you've got a listing page you want to link to or reviews you want to link to, um, agents can set this up so that they are marketing themselves uh, at the top of every report. Now, there's a lot of information in these reports. Uh, so you'll see over here, uh, there's a ton of information and I will go through this. Um, but if you ever needed to get to a section in the report here, all you have to do is click over here, click it, it'll take you right to that section of the report. Up here, you'll see the address of the report. We've got the share button. Uh, they're all turned on to share um, so that you can share these publicly. But there are agents who will pull these privately just because they're going to do some research in the background uh, before they go on a showing so they know as much as they want. Um, if you want to use this as marketing, you can turn on lead capture right here. And then what we also have here is the ability. There's a lot of information in this report, and sometimes you may want to share it. Sometimes you may not want to share it, right? For instance, in the seller report, uh, there's a, a ownership information, right? But maybe when you share this publicly, you don't want to share that with uh, consumers who might be looking at it. So all you have to do is come in here, uncheck the ownership box here, and then that. So you're in the section... driver's seat, essentially, of as an exactly. agent, you're in the driver's seat of what you want to share, which is also something that that was important to us. Uh, we know that. You know, just, you know, if you send out a report to send out information, if you send an MLS listing, you know, that your name is associated with that. So it's important that you have those controls. Um, I did see someone raising their hand. Um, could you please just put your question in Q&A and we'll get to it as soon as we're uh, a little bit further along in the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, uh, but thanks for pointing that out, uh, HUD. Every section of the report, you can turn on or off, right? And as an individual agent, you can do that. We also work with brokerages. Brokerages have the ability to set this up at an organizational gotcha. level as well that they can do that. Uh, we do have the ability to print. You can print an open house flyer. You can print. We've actually got a really nice two or three page summary uh, that will summarize a lot of the information in this. But if you really wanted to, uh, you could print out every single section of this report. Uh, it ends up being like 70 or 80 pages long. So make sure that you have a new ink cartridge in your printer uh, when you start that. Uh, but the summary is very nice, uh, stylized, very succinct. Uh, it looks great as a slide, and if you want to include that as well. Um, so that's there. You'll see down here, uh, we've got Aiden. Aiden is our AI co-pilot. You can ask any question you want here. You'll see right here, we've got the microphone, so you can talk directly into that. And I'll show you, as we start to roll through the report, you'll notice that Aiden will start suggesting questions as we start to scroll through, and I'll come back to that in a, in a moment. And then below that, I just want to point this out. You'll see we've got this map here. This map is also responsive to the report itself. So right now, uh, it's on the properties page. So you can see we've got the outlines of the property here. As we scroll through into the zoning section, it will expand to include the zoning area that the property is in. When we get to points of interest, we'll put pins in the map. So you can see where all those uh, places of interest are as well. So these, both of these are dynamic and will continue to adjust as we go through the report. So first things first, first section is agent remarks. 
Every report is custom to the property and custom to the agent. So HUD and I could both pull this report for the same property. He'd have one link, I'd have another link, right? So maybe you are working with uh, consumers and you've already talked about this property and you might say, uh, you know, you might say, keep in mind that this can also flex as, a, this. The, there's an office that can flex as a fourth bedroom, right? So you can just type notes in here to be seen by anyone who has the link. You can also add photos to the listing. Right, so you'll see we've got some photos of the property here, but we can also add these photos into Aiden. So if I click on the picture here, I could click right here, proceed, and then say, what color is, is the house? And again, that's a very rudimentary example of what we can do, but I'll look at the photo, and <clears> in a second, <throat> it'll tell you that, oh, the house is blue, right? Um, you could ask it any question you want about those photos as well. So, so while this is uploading, there was a question that I think is, oh, there you go, it's blue. Um, based on uh, quality of documents, the, they do, mm -hmm. and this is William's question. We have a, yep. you know, varying degrees of quality of documents. HOAs are famous for low quality pages. that look like the copy of the facts of the facts of the copy. Correct. So, <laughs> so you, you get what I'm saying. So how, yes. do, how does, how does the, uh, real reports uh, just for that? It will, uh, we, you know, we use multimodal AI to analyze the documents. If we're unable to read it, it will say we're unable to okay. read this document. Um, you know, you can upload it here. I'll click manage. Uh, I'm going to add, I've, I've uploaded an inspection report that's already in there. I can add another one. We choose a file here. I'll come right But on here. average, I'll... like, like I'm seeing the process here. That actually looks like a nice report, but if you get in a, I mean, I assume the technology is always improving, but it's not just like low level OCR scanning, right? This is there's no, a no, lot no, more no. going on than just- Yeah, there's okay. a lot more going on, right? But again, to your point, right? When there's a copy of a fax of a fax of a copy, uh, you know, things may start to get that way. So obviously the cleaner the document is, the easier it's going to be. But if we cannot do it, we will call, you know, we'll let them know that we're unable to process that. Okay. So you can see here, I'm uploading the document. It's analyzing the document. The first thing it's going to do when we upload the document is uh, it's going to name it. And then it's also going to try to classify what the report is, right? Um, that way uh, you can see this is an appraisal. You can see right here, it's an appraisal. There's other choices that we've got some other standardized documents in here. And what that does is that helps our document summarizer think about what are the things that are important in this specific document. So I just uploaded this appraisal and you can see here in real time, it is summarizing uh, this document. And now I can come over here and say, who performed the uh, in, uh, appraisal? And it will go in and it will pull the, it'll look through the appraisal and it will say, okay, it looks like, give me one. Can you use natural here. language as well or, or misspellings? Because one of the things that we've been, uh, you know, when you're using chat GPT or whatnot, you know, you can be pretty liberal in terms of your terrible spelling. I'll raise yes. my hand for someone who's a terrible <laughs> speller. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. It will, you know, we're, we're always using the latest uh, models. So yes, you know, it will interpret what you, you know, it may, it will interpret and it found if you are in uh, if you're not spelling it properly, right? Yeah, it looks like it found so, it too. Yeah. There you go. Yep. So we've got documents in there as well, and the summaries. Uh, so again, you upload the inspection report. You can ask it a question that it would be found in the inspection report. So this is all to say that this report can be very customizable, specifically to the property, specifically to the agent, right? Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about what data is included in these reports, right? So we always start with valuations. Uh, you'll see there'll be, depending on the level of the report, up to eight different uh, valuation providers. We are not a valuation provider. We aggregate uh, valuations from different providers. And then what we'll do is we'll put them on the map there, but we'll also give you the high, the low, the, la the last date, and then we'll give you an average, a weighted average valuation, min's max, right? Every most sellers are going to say, "Well, Zillow said this, or Redfin said that." Right? This is a great way for you to have that conversation about that. Um, if there's permits for the property, uh, we'll pull the permits in. What were they for? Were they open? Are they closed? This is a great way. If you think maybe you're looking at like a flipped property, you want to know did they pull permits for this property? It's a great way to look there. Um, we've got all different sorts of zoning uses. So in that specific question, you know. If you do want to put an ADU in, in this property, you'd be able to do that. 
but unfortunately, you would not be able to put a car wash uh, on this property um, if you uh, purchased it. Uh, but it's a great way to pull that out. We've got zoning information, and you can see that Aiden is suggesting zoning details in there. Uh, a lot of climate data. Uh, that's kind of one of the, the key reasons that this product exists is that uh, the founder was attempting to buy a house in Marin County and was rejected from 10 insurance companies for wildfire risk. Uh, luckily, he was able to get his deposit back and he ended up moving uh, back to the East Coast. But as a professional in the business, he didn't even have access to try to figure out whether that was going to be an issue or not. So, um, and if you've got people coming from out of town, maybe somebody's moving to the area, they're not familiar with it, you know, it'll pull that in. In this area, obviously, ice storms are a bigger risk because it's uh, on the Northeast here. Um, but we'll pull all that information in. Uh, we've got historical disaster data. We've got flood maps. Uh, so we'll pull in the flood map uh, from FEMA. We'll also give you approximate insurance cost and then adjusted insurance costs based on risk rating 2.0. Uh, we've got weather, temperature, precipitation, what it's like at the property. Uh, we also pull in hazardous materials. You'll see this map has again changed and is now dropping pins for all these hazardous materials. Uh, it, that might be sites that might be in the area. The radon levels are local. They're not specific to the property. They're just general scores for the area. Again, a great way to advise your, you know, if it's 6.1, .6 you're going to, you might say, hey, I think we should get a radon inspection on this property. Uh, in the area, there tend to be higher than normal uh, amounts here. Long-term, short-term rental data, including cap rate. Uh, we've also, for short-term, we pull in, you know, monthly revenue, how much you might, might make a night, how many nights a week you think this property could rent for. And again, cap rates, vacancy rates on the property. Uh, for short terms, we actually link out. So you can click on this link. It'll open up the Verbo or Airbnb link to this property. So you can actually use it to see how much it actually does compare to the actual property. We've got financial information. So we've got mortgage amounts, loan to value. Uh, we've got loan and transaction history, tax information, uh, tax history, uh, in some cases going back as far as 1999 uh, for properties. We've so got if I wanted to ask Aiden... Aiden, for example, when was the last time this property sold or what's the current mortgage on this house? Mm -hmm. I can, I can do that in line right what here, right? Is the, yep, current mortgage amount. And Aiden will take a look and it will help you answer that question. Great. So while it's doing that, um, you can see we've got ownership information. Uh, we've got neighborhood information. This is a newer section for us. Oh, there we go. Current mortgage amount is right there. Uh, this is new information we've added uh, recently, uh, but we got points of interest data, right? So how close is the firehouse? How close is the police station? Where's the closest grocery store? You could even say, what is the closest kid friendly? Yeah, What's the closest kid friendly restaurant? Um, and it will look through and it will tell you that. So we've got obviously essentials, we've got food and drink, shopping, transportation, recreation. Um, so every anything nearby, so you can see right here, closest kid friendly restaurant is Marketing Cafe at Emory Farm. It's three quarters of a mile away and there's the address. So again, great for people who maybe aren't from the area or even people who are from the area, but they just want to know uh, what's close by. So all that information is included in there. We've got school district information, uh, nearby schools, neighborhood scores. Uh, obviously, it's very quiet on this property, uh, but it's also very car dependent, right? So that will flex with each house. Uh, building and site characteristics. We've got site information, location information. Uh, you know, we've got longitude, latitude, and longitude here. Uh, we also include utilities, so electricity estimates, solar estimates. Uh, what if you wanted to add mini splits? How much would it cost? Uh, we've got internet speeds and providers in the area, remodel estimates. So if you wanted to add central air to the property, what would it cost and how much would it add to the value? Uh, this is an media. infinite scroll of data. Yeah, so I promise <laughs> just we're, keeps we're, going. Almost, we're almost at the bottom. <laughs> uh, you know, news and media. So if the house has ever been in the news, it'll be included there. And we've also got demographics uh, and crime data, uh, including sex offender registry data as well. Uh, so that is everything that is included. Uh, with the with the real report so uh, that's so comprehensive now that we've, thank you so we we'll go through that let's get a little back into our report here and let's a couple more slides and then i'm happy to take questions 
Uh, so we do work on the tier system, right? So there's three tiers of the report. There's a snapshot, there's a buyer, and there's a seller report. As members of SFAR, you get three snapshots reports included every month. You can, every, so each month you'll get three new in, new ones included, and you can use those for research, whatever you like. Um, yeah, so this is also, answering a, this is answering a question right. that, that came up. Is this a member benefit uh, for San Francisco agents? Um, it is. Uh, we and, and we're going to explain that here. Um, you get snapshots basically to determine whether or not this is a uh, that this product is is right for the particular um, listing presentation or the buyer's presentation, whatnot. Um, we've also been able to negotiate down the cost for a full real real report, and Brian will, will let you know what those are. And there's integrations directly on our dashboard as of this morning. You can uh, and I'll, I'll uh, when we're done here, I'll, I'll do a quick screen share and show you where to find everything because that's important. Um, just think of it as like another integration uh, as we have with with uh, 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 other services like Rent Spree or like, um, or in this case, um, like even like Sidekick. So we're able to create these relationships, get you a, some type of discount for sure. But there are always there are premium options. So you can, you know, decide if you want to uh, subscribe and get as many reports as you want a month or, or stick with the snapshots. Then when you have a going on a listing presentation, it's time to really dig into the data, get the opportunity. Didn't mean to sideline you there, Brian, but no, I just wanted that, to make sure that, these guys got absolutely. it. Absolutely. So again, like HUD said, you're going to get three included every month. There is a subscription option. When you subscribe, you get, uh, a, you know, you'll, and you'll have a discount uh, from your side. You'll get, if you subscribe, you get an even deeper discount, uh, unlimited snapshots. So you can pull as many of them as you right. want from a research perspective. Uh, subscription also adds some client collaboration tools. So I could, if HUD was looking at properties with me, I could invite HUD to the platform, put some credits in his account, and he'd be able to use the tool and it would have all my branding on there. Um, so it's a good way to work with agents. As a member benefit, like we said, you get three free snapshots a month and you get a discount off of credits, right? So retail, uh, the buyer report is $15 and the seller report is $29.99. Uh, with your SFAR benefit, if you were buying credits, you can buy, you know, them as low as $8 per credit, which would put the buyer reports at $8 and the seller reports at $16. Uh, so that's a pretty big, that's a great uh, discount. Yeah. Discount. Thank and you. if you become a subscriber, you get an even deeper discount on those as well. Uh, so, you know, and the, the more credits you buy, if you're buying more than 10 credits a month, you can get those reports down under five and $10 a piece. Now, when you subscribe, now question about subscription. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, if we're lucky, we go on listing presentations every month, but sometimes that mm -hmm. doesn't happen. You would do a lot of buyer's work, but when it's time yep. for us to go on a listing presentation, if I were to wanted to go through the process of getting it all set up, use it that one time. Mm -hmm. And then can I resubscribe later? Or how does that work? Sure. If I do, I need yeah. to, yeah, look, okay. we want you to use this as much as you want. We also understand yeah. yeah, that, you know, not at, Every you know, as an agent, I'd love to be going on multiple listening appointments every month, but we also understand that it's a cyclical business, and sometimes you weren't right, and that's right. why you don't even so need to subscribe to buy those reports if you want. This flexibility, still, yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's flexibility if you you know if you've got a, a team or you are luck, lucky enough to go on a bunch of listing appointments every month. Yes, I think subscribing makes sense. You get the best discount, but also even if you're not subscribing, there's still you can still use the tool a la carte, one off whenever you find it necessary. Great. Thank you. Okay. And again, like I said, mentioned earlier, it, everything does come with the SFAR branding, the logos and colors in the report there. Uh, in terms of what you can expect from us, obviously fast and responsive uh, support. We do build features quickly. Uh, you know, there's more than a few instances of uh, almost weekly. To us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> someone talking to, to us about a feature in the morning and us pushing it in the afternoon. Uh, so we do iterate quickly and we do build quickly. Uh, we'll hold webinars and trainings as frequently as you want. We've got an education hub, so you can self-serve all any questions you might have, even though this, we think the system is pretty uh, self-explanatory, but we're always here to help. And we have integrated. So like HUD said, we're integrated in Dashboard, and we're also integrated into Rapitoni. Uh, so as part of the Dashboard integration, you'll just go to your MLS Dashboard. You'll go into the Applications group, and you'll see right there is the Real Reports button. Um, once you click on that, it will create an account for you. Uh, so you won't even have to do that. We'll take care of everything from there and you'll be able to use the system. So you'll be able to pull up to three snapshot reports a month without going any further. If you want to use it more than that, then you'll take the steps from there. Right. So, so this SSO integration just, just, just connects to you, creates your account. 
you're not committed to anything. It just creates the account for you so that you exactly. can utilize those three snapshot, snapshots. Right? Exactly. Yes. And those will refresh every month. So you'll have three in there every month to use. Right. Um, for Rapatoni, it just went live this morning. Thank you for all your help with that, HUD. Um, so in every on every listing page, you'll now see the real reports button down there. Uh, if you come through this way, on the you'll click the real report button. Uh, we'll create it automatically, and then it will take you to the report for that property. Um, so you can check out and buy and you know use one of your credits to purchase purchase that report. Um, this you know when you come through the dashboard, you're just in your account. You pull what you like. When you come through Rapatoni, it will link to the property that you come through. Yeah, I can give an example. You guys all know how you use. Um, I don't see it down there, but for example, there's usually a button for um, uh, zip forms, right? So to create a transaction. And what it does is these these single sign-on uh, tiles, when you're looking at the property detail, it'll take elements of that property and build a transaction in zip forms. Very similar here. It's going to take elements of that property and build you a real report. So it's, it's a deeper integration than just uh, you know linking out uh, to an application. So uh, we try to do that as, as, as often as we can when we have yes. uh, people that have the technology skills. And one thing I will say about these guys and, and other companies that, that, that Jay and I are working with uh, very closely, we're actually in their Slack channels, which is very unique. What, what that means yeah. is that we have direct communication with these guys. Um, we meet monthly to talk about development. It actually makes it kind of exciting because you're not just, you know, these products aren't developed in a void where we don't have any influence or, or any communication with, with these technology providers. I think it's a, I think it's a symbiotic relationship. Real reports in this case gets local information from us in terms of what we know our agents and our brokers want to use. And we get to uh, in, influence the product as, as uh, on your behalf. So. Exactly. And to your point, I mean, when I started the company back in January, we were at 30 data sources and here we are, and now we're at 40 data sources. So we're always adding data sources. If there is a data source that isn't in here that you think would be useful, Again, let us know and we can see what we can do about getting that information added to the reports. Uh, so again, to get started, uh, the easiest way for you to do this is going to be to come through either the dashboard or Rapatoni, uh, but also you can scan this QR code to sign up. If you do scan this QR code, please use the email address that you use in SFAR so that we can yep. link you together and that you receive the member benefit. Um, again, the easiest way is always going to be uh, through dashboard or Rapatoni, but we can handle that as well. Um, so if you have questions, I'd love to take them now. Uh, this is the team. We're always available. Um, those are all our email addresses. <laughs> if you know our first yeah. name and our website, you can get in touch with pretty much anybody. Uh, so, so I, uh, yeah, but don't hesitate to I, reach out. I just got a comment from Will that the tile, the, the tile is not live on the dashboard. That's likely because it was on my test account. I'll make sure after this call that it is live, but let me, let me, uh, let me share my screen real quick and I'll show you guys while I got you. Let's just take a quick look uh, of what we do have access to. So this is the tile that you'll see. And the, what, I wanted, um, what I want you to be, be, be uh, pay attention to, when you see this premium, that means, yes, there's a free option, but there's also you know, additional um, resources for a full account. When you click on this, it'll take you to real reports like it did for me here. And it's just bring through, um, and you'll see that you use your snapshots. So you get your three remaining in your buyers and your seller reports. So I guess with a subscription, these these lower in terms of cost. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Am I correct on that? Okay. So it says 14. Yeah. yeah. So you'll, you get subscription, it changes. you'll get a 10% You'll get a discount a as SFAR member, but then if you buy right. credits, it's an even deeper discount. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So the other thing I'll show you uh, real quickly uh, when I log into the MLS and then William, thank you for uh, letting me know about that. I'll make sure that's taken care of uh, early this morning. Um, but I look at any property. Let's just look at a back on the market property. And you'll notice my MLS is going to little, look a little bit different than you guys. This is MLS 11, which is the new Rabbitoni front end. Uh, you'll be hearing about in the next couple of months. Uh, there's a little preview so you can kind of see it. I'm looking at this. And then I want to, let's say I want to do some, I want to select this property. And then I want to scroll down here to our action buttons, the same action buttons that we've seen uh, before in uh, MLS 10 that, 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 that Brian was showing you. And just click on this guy, and that's going to open up a report for 7th Avenue. And now I have uh, the option to, I'll just do, why don't I just, I'll just use one of my snapshots. I'll just take a quick look at it. I've unlocked that real report, and there we go. So that's, that's it's, the integration is as easy as that. And one thing to, to keep in mind,